guys, I'm going to be colouring this little Seda Boy up from Jenny Lewin today. I'm going to be using uh, Copic Maccas and uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos. So hopefully you enjoy the video today and let's get started. I'm colouring this little Sator boy from uh, Jenny Lewin's newest book Chibi Doodle Whimsy Characters Volume 2. Um, I am going to be using a technique that I learned from a friend of mine called Tina Norton. Um, she actually uses Copic markers as a base layer for everything first before she goes in and puts in a uh, coloured pencil for her uh, shading, midtones and highlights and things like that. So um, first of all I'm going over his skin at the moment with YR double zero and I've also done his uh, neck scarf there in a deep red color as well and it doesn't particularly matter what colors you're using here because it is the underneath layer so it's going to just come out I've tried to use lighter colors on things that I wanted lighter highlights on here as well um, so at the moment I'm doing the belt uh, and the I guess the leather flaps on the arms and the bag there as well so I'm doing that one in E71 so the uh, gold parts on the belt and on his arm and around his hair and that, I'm going to do that Y32 as my lightest colour. I'm also then going to go to his hair and I'm just going to do the whole lot in E25. So all we're doing is just laying down a colour over the top of everything. I have used Expressive Blending Card here as well. I'm going to use Polychromos because they seem to work nicer on the Expressive Card um, other than the Prismacolors which can uh, look really waxy and build up on that leaving blooms and things. So I'm doing the books here. I've got E37. I'm just doing over the top and a little bit of the shadow edge of the book there. I'm going around the path with W7, so I'm just going around all of the cobblestones here and filling that in because that will be the darkest part of the road. So just as I'm going ahead to do this one, um, I will put a colour list uh, in my blog as well of the colours that I have used. So I'm just going around these stones here to create uh, some depth in those areas and then the middle stones I'm going to do those W5. I'm doing them lighter because they're sitting more on top of the, um, so they'd be more raised than the rest of it. So I've done them a little bit lighter. Just popped in to do those now. I'm being really rough because we are just going to go over it again with some pencil to bring in the shade and things like that. So I'm using E50 just there on the books to fill that in and I'm doing all of his hair on the legs there the same color as the hair on his head. So we've got the E25 there. So I'm going to do the hooves uh, a darker color so I'm going to use E59 for those just to put some nice deep color into it. So I've got some uh, E55 which is a sand colour. I'm just doing over the um, sandy areas here with the grass on top of it. I'm also going to put this over the top of the YR00 on his horns because um, I think that it just made them stand out a little bit different to the rest of the skin there. So I've got some W3. I've done the steps and the rocks with this. I've just brought in some YG41 to do the tops of the grass patches here. So I'm going to start on the sky. So first of all, I'm going to be using RV02 from the top and bringing it down. And then from the bottom up, I'm going to use some B00. So just bringing it from where the trees end and up towards the middle. But I'm going to leave a gap in the middle for another color, which will be an orange. So I'm just doing the RV02 first. And then I've got my B00, bringing it up a little bit further. So you can see I've left a gap in the middle there. And I'm going to use YR00 for the middle. I'm just going running out of marker here, so I'll just fill it up there. So what I'm going to do is then to smoothly blend that over, I'm going to add some uh, B000 
over the top of the orange part and then I'm going to use YR000 over the top of that again. So blending it out a little bit now I've got some B000 just to go over the top and then I've got that next YR000 and I'm just bringing that over the pink and a little bit on the blue as well. So in the background there with the lamp we're going to use some RV000 to fill that in. And I just felt just behind the lamp part there where the glass would be, I just did the colour on that E71 to make it lighter. The front trees I'm doing here are E74 and I'm just going to go over the other side here as well to do that. The back trees we're going to do a little bit darker because they'll be in the shadow more. I'm making them E77. So I'm not doing it very neatly, just going over with one layer of the marker just to fill in that colour as our base layer. If you'd like to learn more about colouring in depth, there are some great online colouring classes. I will put a link down the bottom in the description for Kit and Clatter. Um, they are fantastic. Uh, you'll be able to learn a lot of techniques with pencil and marker by doing those classes. Um, now I'm coming along here and I'm doing the top part of the bushes. So at the back there I've done them a different colour to the front. So the back I've done G000. In the front I've done YG00, so it's a little bit brighter. So G000 at the back and YG00 here at the front. Also I'm going to do this on the plants as well, the same, the YG00 here. And pop it into the plants there. So I'm just going to move on to the lamp. I'm going to use C3 and C0 on the post and I'm going to do one side of the post there and also on the top of the lamp there. I'm using a couple of colours, Y000, YR00, YR000 and some R17 for the middle of that lamp and I've just sort of put them in, um, blended them through. I'm actually not going to go too much over that with pencil later but I will put some more pencil into it so you'll be able to see that when I get to that bit. Now I'm using Cinnamon 189 to mark in all of the shadow areas now. I'm going to blend this out with medium flesh which was 131. I'm just bringing that colour further out. Now because this is on Express It blending card there's not a lot of blending ability because there is no tooth but because these pencils are so nice and soft I'm able to go over the top of the other colour and bring this colour a little bit further down. So next colour I'm going to use is Light Flesh and I'm going to, uh, that was 132 and I'm going to just bring this over almost the remainder of it. Now um, I am running out of my Caran d'Ache white pencil so it is in a pencil extender so you might not be able to recognize it when I do bring it up but I am actually going to use that to go over um, some of the skin areas and I've also got the Prismacolor one here as well. I do like the Caran d'Ache one better, it's a lot smoother and it goes over the polys a lot better. So I'm just using circular motions here to get that colour on there as well. Um, and I do want to leave some of that remaining skin tone that was already on there from the Copics. I want that to come through so I don't really want to go over it too much but enough to show that highlight as well. So I'm just finishing that off now for the skin. I'm using a blending stub here with some uh, blending solution on it just to help get the pencil off the black line so that it doesn't look like it's smudged over it and just to smooth out the pencil a little bit more too. Okay so we're going to start on the flute so I'm using a nougat for the first colour for the darker colours and I've done it on the outside edges where the shadows would be. I'm blending it out with burnt ochre just leaving little circles in the middle of the area for the highlight there. So I'm going to use white to go over and blend that through as well. Just keep sharpening my pencil there because the Prismacolor seem to break um, very very easily on the paper and they leave a lot of dust as well. So I'm going to use that blending stub again just to go over the top of that. So I'm starting on the belt and the bag now and also on the bands on the arms. So I'm going into the shadow areas with that nougat again. And I'm doing some nice uh, 
shades in the bag to show depth and highlight areas because obviously you're not just going to have one flat color on something like that. So I'm going in again with that burnt ochre and going over the top of that and bringing it a little bit further out. I'm going to use a bit of warm grey 6 throughout this as well just to bring more shadow into those areas. So I've got that one there now. The good thing about this is that I can put it in and I can go over it with the other colours and it doesn't actually look like it's just grey. Um, it just builds up a nice shadow there. I'm going to use a little bit of white to go over the middle part there just to get it to stand out a bit and I've just gone back over it with the burnt ochre. So you can already start to see some depth in the skin and in the arms and on the belt as well and the bag. I'm going to use the same down here on the strap as well and on his arms. So the reason um, the polys are a lot smoother is because they are made they're more oil based rather than wax based. And they just seem to be so nice and smooth and they just flow over the paper, even though the paper has no tooth. Now with the blending solution that I've used, it doesn't affect the Copic markers at all because the Copic markers are alcohol based, it's a little bit different. Um, whereas the uh, blending solution only seems to affect the pencil side of it. So I've just gone in and as, uh, neatened up that again. So I'm going to use the next colour and I don't even know how to pronounce it so I'm not even going to try. <laughs> um, but it was number uh, 169. And I've gone in with some grey six again to deepen that up again and I'm using some deep red as well. So the colour that I actually used, the Copic colour I used on the scarf was uh, R27 originally. So I've just gone over it now with those colours. It's got that deep red there. And then I'm going to use some white uh, for the highlight areas. I'm going to bring some, um, this is actually the polychromos white that I'm using on that. Later on I'm going to bring over some opaque watercolours uh, to put in my highlight areas as well to give the picture a bit of contrast. So I'm using the same colours that I used in the scarf now just on the book just to create some different uh, tones and textures through there. I'm going to do them all different colours, so the top one I've just done for that. The colour there that I can't pronounce, uh, which is 169, I'm going to use this in the hair. So I'm going to go in and do some shadow areas. So the hair's kind of curly or wavy, so where it looks like the wave dips in, I'm going to put this into that area. And where it comes out, I'm going to leave that light. So I'm putting this on the eyebrows there as well. And I'm also putting it on some of the longer strands all the way in to create some depth and overlapping of hair there as well. So uh, with the video you can uh, slow it down, I think you can do that in YouTube actually, I'll have to have a look into that, but just slow it down or pause it when I get, like I'll finish a certain bit, pause it so you can have a look at it and see what I've done. Um, I do know that some of the colours in this are a little washed out due to the camera lighting, which I do apologise for. Um, but just take your time. Don't think that um, you need to rush through it. Take your time. Do each section as you, you know, with as much attention that you need to. So I'm going in further here now. I am going to actually use exactly the same colours on the legs as well, but I'm just going to use a different technique to do those. So I'm just writing down the next colour there, which I've got Indian Red next. So I'm just coming in and I'm bringing that colour a little bit further out from what I did before. I did just check the uh, video settings for YouTube. You can actually slow that down to as low as uh, I think it was 0.25%. So um, yeah, just go ahead and slow it down if you'd like just so that you can keep up or just watch a portion of it, pause it, have a go at it and then watch some more. So hopefully um, these tutorials do help you out a lot. If you were interested in a little bit more detail on how to do hair, skin and things like that, there are specialist uh, coloring courses that you can do. I mentioned um, previously Kit and Clatter, so I've popped the details to that in the description below as well. So I've just gone uh, over with some Venetian Red now and I've brought this a little bit further out. So I've mainly taken up most of the color on the hair with that. I'm using the white, uh, uh, polychromos white 
to go over the highlight areas of, on there just to create a little bit of highlight. So we've got highlight, midtone, and depth now. The camera lighting has changed again there, so it's really hard to see the differences in that. But the main picture that you can see at the start and at the end of the video there, that's how that's what look it actually has. So as I said, I'm going to use the same colors in the hair on the legs. So I'm using that color that I can't pronounce, uh, 169, and I'm just really just going in and putting little strokes. So I've sharpened my pencil nice and fine, and because these pencils are so awesome, um, they don't break. So I've just sharpened it nice and fine so I can get some really fine little lines and strokes. So I've just done them from the top down. I'm going to bring the Indian Red over the top of that and do exactly the same thing. So you'll be able to see strands of both colors through that because I'm just doing them randomly over the whole area. I've got um, some, so I just use Indian Red and now I'm using Venetian Red to do the same thing. And also I'm using a little bit of gray in there to put in some darker shadows. So I've used gray where the creases of the leg would be and also under the shadow areas there where the belt and the bag lay. So I'm just popping on to the other side to do that now. It takes a little bit of time, but it does look really good. You've got lots of texture and it looks like fur or hair rather than just one plain color. And it is quite easy to do. So all I'm doing is just little lines all over the whole area. And then I'm coming back in with the next color over the top of those little lines. Some of them catch in between, some of them go over the top. So you really do get a nice texture there. I've got some gray there as well to put in some depth. I might put a little, a few flicks of the gray through the hair as well there. Now I've had to use the uh, pencil extender on my uh, Prismacolor white pencil because it was getting too small for me to hold and sharpen. So that's, I've got a pencil extender on that one as well. So I've just used that to put some white strokes through the hair as well. Um, to add a few highlights in there because the hair is all different colors. So I'm going to use some Sanguine, that's number 188, and I'm just going to go in and do some of the gold sections here. So I'm using the Sanguine as the darker part of the gold, and I'm just doing it on some of the edge parts there. Got a little bit of black as well because we want to create some real nice depth um, in the gold. So I'm just going to switch in between the colors too because there are a few different parts of gold on here. So I'll just do that now. I've got some dark chrome yellow and I'm going over the top of the black and the sanguine areas and just bringing this further out. I'm going to use leave a highlight area in the middle which I'm going to do with the white opaque um, watercolor at the end. So I've got that chromium yellow which is 107. And I'm just going in and filling out the rest of that area. So I've just got uh, the white pencil there and I'm just going in and putting in white spots throughout that area and just blending it in nice and smooth. I've done a little bit on the buckle there as well and I'm also going to do these edge parts around the bottom of the this belt thing here. And obviously when I come back in with the white um, watercolor, it will brighten that up a little bit. So this pencil I'm using now is the white Caran d'Ache pencil. I love it. It's great with um, polychromos. So I just use that there for a second just to brighten up the white a little bit. I'm using that blending tool again just to come in and just blend out the rest of those colors. And I'm going to use the colors that I used in the gold there just on that middle book there. Okay. Just got some of that gray and I've just put some nice little thin lines through it and just put a little bit of shadow into where the belt is wrapped around there. And I've just used the blending tool to smooth that off a bit. So I'm going to do some eyes, uh, his eyes, and I'm also going to do the plants and the grass as well. So first of all with the eyes I'm using pine green for the darker part of the eye. So the middle part will be a little bit darker than the outside area. So I've done it halfway down and then I've just come in with the permanent green, sorry permanent olive green or green olive it is, 167 and then I've come over that with 
the next color which was a light green which is 171 so I've done it lighter on the outside edge than I have on the inside just using the white Prismacolor again there and then I've come back in with the white Caran d'Ache one I've got some grey and I'm using the grey underneath the shadow of the lids there and I missed some gold on his whistle there which I've just filled in as well decided to blend out the whistle there with the Caran d'Ache pencil uh, to get a smoother blend through as well so I'm just doing the bottom book with the greens so we've got the three different colored books now so I've actually started on the path down the bottom there but the video is just cut off the edge bit there I do move the page in a sec so all I'm doing is going around the um, cobblestones with the darkest warm gray so that was warm gray six which is number 275 and I'm just going around that and smoothing it a little bit further out towards the middle part of that section so I've done that on each and on and around each of those cobblestones there So as I'm going ahead to do that there, I'll just let you know about our Facebook group, or my Facebook group. Um, so the link is in the description below. You can also follow me on Instagram as well. Um, but if you've got any questions or you want to request a picture to be done, please uh, just pop in and let me know or send me uh, a message through YouTube here. Um, you're welcome to also comment in the, in the comments as well. So I've just finished that off now with the darker grey. Now I'm going to do the cobblestone parts there. I've got the next grey which is number five um, so before I do the cobblestone story I will just blend out the rest of that path around it with the W5 first and then I'm going to use it to go around the edge parts of each of the cobblestones so you can see I've put in a shadow area around his foot there um, just to show shadow there and I'm just doing it on the outer edges and bringing it a little bit further in I am going to blend that one out with the next grey which I've got is number four which is 273 and I'll bring that a little bit further out towards the shadowy, towards a highlight area, sorry. So the middle part of the uh, cobblestone will be more white, so we'll use the white pencil to come in and just smooth that out afterwards. So I've got the lighter grey there, which is number four. So you can see I've nearly filled in the whole area. I've just done a light layer in the middle part. And I've used the Caran d'Ache white to go over that and blend it in nice and smooth. The rocks are very similar. I'm just using the same colors to create some shadows in there. And I'm using the, use the white to blend that out a little bit. So the steps, I've also done some of the steps darker. So underneath of the bottom of each step, I've done a little bit darker. And also as the step comes down, I've done that part darker as well. So I've just used the warm grays and the white to do that. So you can see there it looks like they're they're stepping down now with that shade in them okay so I've got the next color now I've got brown ochre and I'm going into the shadow areas of the sandy areas now here underneath the grass so I'm going to pop this through into the shadow areas and define the areas which would be darker first I just wanted to say too I'm not actually putting a lot of pressure on these pencils I'm using them fairly lightly um, which is great because it means you're putting less pressure on um, your hands and things like that as well. I have trouble with arthritis, so I do know what it's like uh, trying to color uh, and put a lot of pressure on pencils. So these are really nice and smooth, and I haven't put a lot of pressure in. Uh, if you want a darker color, you just go over it again and again and again to get the darker color. So you don't have to put a lot of pressure on them. So now I'm coming in with the burnt ochre again, and I'm just coming out further towards the highlight area. I have filled this in a fair bit because I want a little bit of the color underneath the lightest color which will be white. So now I'm just going to use the Caran d'Ache white and just blend that through. So you can see that the white really did fade it out a bit so that's why I wanted to put the color over the whole lot. We may come in and put a bit more over that just to darken those depths up a little bit I think. So first of all, we, we had the brown ochre and then the burnt ochre and then the white again. So I'm just coming back over it again. So as I said, we can layer it more because it is so smooth.
So once I've done that, we're going to start on the grass on top of the hill here. And I'm going to use exactly the same colors that I actually used in his eyes. Um, so I'll just run through those again. I had pine green 267, permanent green olive 167, and I had permanent green 266, and light green, which was 171. So I'm going to start with the pine green, and all I'm going to do is lines. So I'm just doing little lines all over, like I did on the legs, but I've just done it on the grass. Now the grass I've tried to do in different directions though, because grass doesn't generally sit in one direction, unless there's wind blowing on it um, in the one direction. Um, so I've just done little lines all over in all directions, randomly all over that area. I'm going to go over again with the next color, which was permanent green olive. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So the more layers that I put on, the more color that goes into it, the more depth and texture it looks like it's got. So I've come in and done that one now. Then I'm going to move to just permanent green as well and do that there. So on the plants, I've got the permanent green and I'm just doing in all the viney parts or the veiny parts of the leaves. The leaves, I should say. Um, and I'm creating some highlight in the middle of them. So I'm doing both sides, edges, and also the middle vein. And I'm putting some more into that grass too. Uh, so this is now the light green that I'm using. I'm going over the top of the permanent green. I've got some white there to blend that in as well. I'm also going to put some white spots on the leaves with the opaque white as well at the end. Just putting a little bit of that warm grey into it again, so the number six, just to create some nice shadow areas in there. So I really just want to give them some depth and just show that they are behind the tree and behind sitting behind the rock there. So that's why I'm doing all that with this. So I've used the blending stub to go over the top of that again to bring uh, take all of the color off the black lines again. So all I'm doing is going over the top of the previous color and um, blending and smoothing it out towards the highlight part of the area. So when you have a picture you always have your dark, your mid and your highlight. So that's all I'm doing with these plants. To stop it from looking like flat I've put in some grey behind some areas and in front of some areas to show where there would be shadow sitting on those as well. And it looks like it's heading towards uh, twilight here so there would be quite dark in behind the trees, uh, behind the plants, sorry, on the back bushes there would be darker because we've got a lot of shadow coming in now. So I decided to add some ivory to the skin because it was really still quite pink. So I've just used the ivory from the Polychromos uh, pencils and just gone over the skin with that. So um, what I actually have here is I have the blender pencil from the Prismacolor set. So um, if you have that or any other blender pencil, um, it, it is really good because um, it helps to smooth out the color and blend colors in. So um, I'm going to do the horns now. So we're going to start with, uh, I've got brown ochre first, and I've just done that on the edges and around each of the little lines that were already on there. I'm going to use burnt ochre just to bring that out a little bit. And you can see I've left a little spot in the middle there with just the sand. So I'm going to fill in a bit of white in there. I'm using the Caran d'Ache white for that. When I come back over with the watercolor later on, I will put that in these wider areas of the horns. So I'm just putting a little bit more grey there in the eyes, they weren't quite deep enough. So I'm going to start on the plant on the side there. So I'm using the permanent green olive. These are the colours that I used on the other side as well. I'm going to blend that out with permanent green and then some light green. So all I'm doing is following the lines that uh, Jenny has put in there on those leaves already. Um, I'm just following them and I'm just pushing the pencil 
a little bit further out towards the edge of the leaf so just from the corners of each of those sections outwards so that's all I'm doing for that and I'm just going to blend over that with the other colors and I'll also use some white just to finalize that blend off so I'm just doing uh, the swapping between the colors there to get the blend that I'm looking for So I'll just mention again, I did get this book from, uh, uh, this image from the book Chibi Doodle Whimsy Characters version 2 from Jenny Lun. Um, so I will pop the details of that in the description below there as well for you. So I am going to use the colourless blender from the Prismacolor set 2 on the trees in the background in a little while. So just to let you know that now as well. So um, I am going to move on to the lamppost. I'm going to use some of the cool greys for this. Um, so I will use cold grey 6 and cold grey 2. So I'm just going to do this to one side of the post and then I'm going to stick a little bit of detail in the lamp post up the top there. So I've just done the right hand side of each of the sections on the roof part of the lamp and I'm just blending them out now with the grey. I'm going to go back over again with a little bit of white just to blend that right through. Before I do that though I've just got the lightest coal grey which is 10% uh, coal grey which is coal grey one and then I'll go over it with the white. So I'm using the Caran d'Ache white there for that one. I'm going to use some Pompeian Red uh, which is number 191 to do inside the mouth there. I just put a little tip of that into the lamp as well there. So I'm going to do the front part of the bush behind him now. So I have got the chromium green op opaque it's called um, which is 174 and all I'm going to do is go in with circular motions all over the back area there. So just behind the plant and um, behind him, I'm going to do some greys in behind the plant to just give it a little bit more depth and shadow. But I'm trying to make this quite easy for you. Um, just something quick and simple. Still looks pretty good. So I'm just popping in there now. I'm just doing circular motions with that one all over the back. I'm going to bring the next colour in, which is permanent green olive, which we used in the plants and in the grass as well. I'm just going to do the same thing over the top of the previous one. I'm just going to do the same thing, just circular motions all over until I fill this area out. So after this color, I'm going to just use normal permanent green and then I'm going to go to light green and I'm going to use that warm gray six to go into those darker areas. And I'm going to go over them again with that chrome green opaque, chromium green opaque, just to make sure that the color is nice and smooth and blends in. I'm going to bring some white um, opaque watercolour in over the top of this and just put some flecks of white to show reflections and things like that as well. So I'll do that at the end. So around the tree there and, and the plant, I'm making it really dark behind there just to show that the tree is in front of it. And I'm doing it on the other side there as well. And where the rocks are sort of sitting against the grass there too, I'll do that as well. So now I've done that, I'm just going to list down the colours I'm going to use for the back part of that same section. So I'm going to use Hooker's Green 159, Emerald Green uh, 170, sorry 163 and Chrome Oxide Fury uh, or Fiery uh, 276 for the last part of it there. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I've done here, um, going over the top using a circular motion and um, blending it further or all over the area. Now I did blend and smudge the very back area a little bit closer together so the circles are a lot closer together than the ones at the front because it is at the back I wanted that a little bit darker so that's why I've done that there. So I didn't go completely up to the top of that with it with that color and I've brought in the next color over the top of that there. So the bottom part or the bottom section is going to be a lot darker because there's the shadow of the other bush in front of it and then the top will be a lot lighter. So I'm just using those colors, I'm swapping between them and just doing circular motions all over them. 
I'm just bringing some white over the top of that now. So just doing the same thing, little circular motions. I'm sort of randomly picking spots to do it over the whole area there. And they will be brightened up obviously when I put that uh, white on at the end. So I'm just fix finishing up some details here in the background and putting a bit more of shadow in. So I'm using some cold, uh, warm grey here in the background. So just the warm grey 6 and I will go over it a little bit with the... Uh, white and also the darker color of the green as well just to bring it all in together okay so I'm going to work on the sky which is pretty much all that's left now and the middle of the lamp there so we'll go ahead and move on to that section now when I finished this section I still felt like that the um, skin color and the background color of the sky were too close together so I had to change it at the end um, but I'm using here, I've got light thaleo blue, light purple pink, and light cadmium red. So that's going to go in uh, with the colors that I used in the background with the Copics. So we're going to start with the pink color, which was the light purple pink at the top. I'm going to use the light thaleo blue from the bottom up. And I'm going to use that light cadmium red in the middle quite lightly. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep doing this now. So I'm doing exactly the same thing that I did with the Copics really. I'm just putting uh, light pressure over that whole area. I'm not fussed about how that goes on because it is just nice and light. I am going to blend it out with the white at the end. So the white will go over and smudge all the colors together. I've just changed the light there to see if we can see this background a little bit more because it is hard to see with the camera lighting there. I'm using the red now, so this is a light cadmium red, and I'm putting this all into um, over the top of the pink as well as coming down further. So this color here, I think you can slightly see it there once the shadow goes over it a little bit more. Um, so this will go down all the way to the blue. So I've got that light thaleo blue now and I'm just putting that in so going up from the bottom and into the orange a bit there as well. There isn't a lot of the blue so there's a little less to go along there. I've got the white there just to smudge that side in a bit so I could see uh, what it actually looked like against his skin there. So you could see actually in this image here that the orange behind looks almost exactly the same as his skin color. So um, I did decide that I needed to darken this up a little bit and I thought maybe I could turn it into an evening sky rather than perhaps a morning sky. Um, so I will go over this again. I've got some crimson uh, there to do and I've also got some delft blue. So I'm going to use those colors to deepen it up a little bit um, and go over what I've just done now. I'm also going to put these uh, pretty colors into the lamp as well so you can see them reflecting through the lamp but they'll be a little bit lighter than what they would be um, on the outside apart because obviously looking through the glass you're going to have a different color through that and there's also going to be a reflection off that as well. So I'm just going in with the blending stub now just to see if I can um, smooth this out a bit. And I'm using the blending solution on this as well. I've just got some uh, light chrome yellow there and I'm just putting a little bit of that into the lamp here to show the glow of the candle. So I'm going to start on the trees now. So I'm only using two colors for the trees. I'm going to use Van Dyke Brown and Walnut Brown. So what I'm doing is I'm just going in and lining the areas on the tree that were already there and I'm putting in the shadow areas where the tree would overlap the other parts of the tree. I'm also putting a line of this on most of the areas will be on the right hand side or where the, I think the calf shadow might fall. Um, so you can sort of choose wherever you want. Look, it really doesn't make a difference if you did it on the opposite side or, or um, 
anywhere else. It it just gives it the look that the tree is um, more 3D rather than just flat on the page. So I'm just going in and putting that in now and I'm going to blend all that out with the walnut brown. You'll notice that I put in some lines of my own there. So I've just put little knots in the tree um, just to put a little bit more texture through it because it was just quite plain there. So um, I just stuck my own little scribble in the middle there just to bring it out a little bit. You could do any shape or form there if you'd like or you can just leave it how it was. So I'm still going in with that same colour. I've got Van Dyke Brown and I'm going to go over it in a second with some Walnut Brown. Now this is where I'm going to use the colourless blender as well because I didn't want to put a lot of white into the trees. I quite like them to be nice and dark. So um, I will bring the blender over the top to smoothly blend those two colours together and just bring it smoother over the the, col the Kopi colour basically. So I'll go ahead and do this now. So you can see that I didn't bring that colour all the way over the tree. I left a large gap in the middle there because these will be the lighter trees being at the front. I wanted to leave that Copic marker colour coming through there. So the blender I'm just going over the top of the colour and I'm just smudging, which is pretty much all it does, smudging that uh, colour pigment in towards the middle of the tree there. So it's creating a little bit of a curved look on the trunk of the, and the branches of the tree there. I'm doing it on both sides. So I only used um, the lighter of the colour quite firmly and the other colour um, I used a little bit more on that tree. But for the back tree, I'm going to use mostly the darker colour, which was the Van Dyke Brown. And I'm just going to go over this entire tree. You might like to use different browns. You don't have to use the same browns. There's so many in the pack. Uh, if you are using Prismacolors, there's so many of those in the pack too. So um, it is just up to you. I've used these ones because they seem to match the um, E74 and E77 that I used with the Copics in the background. So I'm just going over that with this one now. So you can see, again, I've left a little bit of a gap in some of those places where I want a little bit of... Um, shadow a highlight and mid-tone to show through and I'm using the colorless blender again just to blend it all out nice and smooth so that there's no gaps between the color changeover and it looks nice and smooth and it looks like the trees have some nice texture there so I've got my white uh, opaque watercolor here and I've got a tiny little brush and I'm just going in and I'm going to put a whole heap of white all over the picture. So I'm going to use this as my contrast. It helps to put a little bit of character into it and it allows me to put some more highlights through the picture. So I'm going to start by just putting small dots over the area and this is when I do decide um, I think that I finished it. <laughs> but every time I look at it I keep coming back to that middle part there where the skin and the sky are very very similar in colour. So I will go in and put some extra colours into that after I finish this white. So I'm just putting it anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> so wherever you feel you want to put it you can put this. I've put some in the leaves, I've put some in the back bushes, I've put some on his skin, I've put it in the lamp. Um, I've basically put it everywhere on the picture <laughs> so it creates a uh, nice contrast there so I've even placed it on the glass on the top there of the lantern or the lamp so all I've done is just put some diagonal lines across that to show a reflection there so just going ahead to do that now and I realized that I forgot the, the feet or the hooves so I'm just going in there with um, a dark uh, walnut brown or, or something like that if you're using Prismacolors it'll be the darkest brown that you can find um, so espresso or something like that um, but I just use a dark brown there and put some highlights in the hoof with the white 
and I'm putting some little flecks through the grass. I don't want to put too much in, but I want to show that there's different colours through there as well. I'm putting a couple of little lines and some spots on the cobblestones down there as well. And um, I'm just going to put a couple of strokes in his hair as well there. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this bit off, and then I'm going to come back in to finish that sky. So now I'm going to finish off the sky. So I've got crimson here and I'm going to put this over the pink and the middle area. So I'm kind of trying to blend that um, orangey part in the middle there out a little bit so that it looks uh, different to the skin color in um, the front of the Seder boy there. So um, it is just lightly going over the top of the colors that were already there and because I did use the Caran uh, white it is still quite smooth so I can still go over the top of that again so I'm just popping that in now and I'm gonna as I said make this more of an evening sky so I'm gonna put some stars uh, in the top there with my uh, white as well so I'll go ahead and finish this off first and then I'll blend it out with the white again just going to pop a little bit into the lamp there just around the lines I had already done just to bring the darker color through. Now I'm using the Delft blue here just to go between the two colors. So I'm going to just put a little bit or you can see I've just put a little bit over the top of the transition line and then I'm coming back in with the blue that we used to start with. So the lighter blue at the start I'm going back over the top with that. I'm going to use the white to blend all that through now. So you can look, see that it's starting to look nice and smooth and the colour difference between the sky and his skin now is a lot different. Um, I think it brings him forward a lot more and it does make that sky look a little bit more rich as well. So I'm just using that colourless blender just to go over the final eyes and push the, well not that there is any tooth, but um, just push that colour in and smudge it in nicely. I've just redone the white on the lamp there and I've just changed his eye a little bit there and I'm putting some more... Uh, wiped through and so I'm just going to show you the finished product now so we've got our final image there he looks really cute we've got our little um, spots in the sky there in the stars um, there's lots of uh, shadows and textures and things in there so it looks great and um, I just want to thank Jenny Lewin for allowing me the opportunity to do this picture and I have heard that she will be bringing out a new book for, or new images fairly soon so I will get uh, to do a couple more hopefully soon um, but yeah thank you everyone for watching and um, if you haven't subscribed already please do so make sure that you check out the description below thanks guys